Hey, this is Adam Torres, and I'm here to tell you that it has never been easier to start your very own podcast. At Mission Matters, our goal is to amplify stories that matter. That means we want to help you start your podcast because your story matters. We can do this in three different ways. One, join our podcast school and take a free or paid course. Two, visit our resources page where we've already figured out what you need, such as where to host your podcast. Or three, heck, we can even do everything for you through our podcast agency, including editing for cheaper than you can do in-house. Oh, and no contracts, services month to month. Get started by heading over to missionmatters.com and click on Start a Podcast. All right, now let's get into the show. Hey, I'd like to welcome you to another episode of the Mission Matters Marketing Podcast, your source for all things marketing. My name is Adam Torres. You can follow me on Instagram at Ask Adam Torres. Keep up with my book releases, book tour schedule, signings, all that other good stuff. Always love to connect with you there. And as always, if you'd like to apply to become a co-author of one of my upcoming books, just head on over to the website, missionmatters.com, and click on Become an Author to Apply. All right, so today I have Nat Berman on the line, and he's CEO over at Uncoached. Nat, welcome to the show. Hey, how you doing? It's nice to be here. Thank you. Oh, man, Nat, I'm excited to have you on the line today. So um, we're going to get into doing it the uncoached way. So for all the listeners out here, I want to I tee this one up to you because I think it's a great, great topic. So Nat's been in the, uh, he's been in the online business or the website business um, and for quite some time now, going back to, I think, 2007. He's going to go more into that. And uh, it, it's, it's really fun for me to do this interview because I know a lot of people like Nat that many people don't hear from. And these are people, these are guys that have been in the background making their money, doing their thing, and running successful online businesses, but they're not usually the type to be out in the front. You're not going to see them in all these ads on YouTube, buy my course, do this, do that. So nobody ever knows of them. So to have Nat on the show today is pretty unique. So hey, Nat, just want to say first off, welcome. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it. So um, we're going to get into today's topic, um, the uncoached way. I think we should just uh, get right into, first off, um, the inception of kind of how you got into this into this business and what that means because uh, um, for those that aren't familiar with the brand overall, what you've managed to do with your holding company, I think is pretty remarkable. So tell us a little bit more about the company, please. Sure. Uh, so back in 2007, I was actually a uh, headhunter in financial services in New York City. Uh, having nothing to do with any of this stuff. Um, but uh, I always liked to write, um, and that goes back a long way since I was a kid. Uh, and I, one of my friends actually reached out to me and said, did you ever hear of this site called Blogspot? And I know that kind of dates me a little bit, but to this day, Blogspot is still around. It's Google's blogging platform. And it was very intriguing to me uh, to know that, hey, I could start writing some stuff and maybe some people will see it. And so I started writing just random articles, kind of like under my own name. I actually had a, a blog title called The Preacher's Rant, which was just random. Um, but uh, I tend to like to speak when given the opportunity, so it was a good title. Um, but then I started seeing all these other kind of websites out there. And in 2007, in terms of blogging, you know, and, and that word still even today has a kind of a bad rap. It, you know, people think of someone just sitting at home in, in, in a basement just writing about their random thoughts all day. It's, mm -hmm. I think now today blogging is much more synonymous with the word website. Um, mm -hmm. And so back back then um, I started seeing all these sites that were like gossip celebrity sites. I mean, this is we're talking the superficial and sites like Celebuzz and all these random sites that used to just make fun of celebrities all the time. There was a time when that was very, very popular, and these sites were getting tons and tons of traffic. And um, I knew I had that kind of writer personality. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. But I learned about, you know, a little thing called WordPress. And I always liked the word uncoached. It was something <laughs> that originated uh, back in high school. We used to say that my, my JV, co JV coach was uncoached just because of the way he used to talk to us and, and ride us pretty hard. Um, and the domain was available, and I just, I, I really just sort of jumped into it, not knowing a thing about any of this stuff. But uh, also back then, it was much easier to reach webmasters. Like if you, if you saw an email and you sent an email to someone, a lot of times they'd respond to you. I know that sounds completely ridiculous today. I mean, you can't get in touch with anybody. 
um, just by sending a cold email. But I just built up this network very, very quickly of sites that were kind of like mine, just these small little independent sites, and mine was much more sports entertainment oriented. And uh, within about six months, I was I was making a, a pretty pretty good living. This was all on the side. This is while I was working. Um, I, I would work, you know, probably eight to six or so, and then I would come home, and from seven to whenever, I would just write a ton. Um, and it picked up traction. In the beginning, you know, nobody gave me time of day. I didn't really hear from any people, but I sort of caught a, I guess you could call it a break when um, Sports Illustrated started linking to my stuff, and uh, mm. that really started sending, sending the referrals my way. Um, and so 2008, financial crisis hit. My bosses told me I was working for two guys. We, we, it was just a, an independent search firm. Um, they said, look, things are going to be probably pretty rough for the next you know, year, two years. And they, they were really nice to me, said, you know, you can still come into the office and do whatever you want. And so I stayed in there for, I don't know, a few weeks or whatever it was, and I just kept working on the websites. Um, and the first month that I think you know, I made, I don't know, 1000 bucks or something, I just said, you know, take a shot. And so it was, uh, I think it was May of 08, um, I told my bosses, you know, I'm going to give this a try, and, you know, never looked back. It's been uh, almost wow. years now. Yeah, yeah. It's, That's and, absolutely uh, amazing. And let's, uh, so let, let's go present day. So tell us more about, um, you know, how, uh, about Uncoached and your vision yep. for the company and kind of what, what you plan on going for. Sure. So... Today, Uncoached is really just, uh, you know, a holding company for um, a portfolio of websites. So I own nine different domains. You know, two or three of those domains make up a lot of the traffic and a lot of the revenue generation of the company. Uh, but I have since actually returned to Uncoached.com, um, mm-hmm. which is now more sort of my personal you know, blog per se, where I just write a different article each day, and those articles are actually an extension of videos that I put out each day on LinkedIn, which are only about two minutes or so. So I put out the videos each day, and it's really just kind of about, you know, it could be about my journey. It could be about uh, tips on how to work better, work faster, work smarter, um, just a whole bunch of stuff. So, uh, But the actual, you know, holding company itself, it's, it is the portfolio websites, which span, you know, a, a number of different verticals like entertainment, um, you know, pets. I got a couple of, I got a dog site, I got a, a cat site, um, financial website, uh, you know, home and garden. So it, it kind of runs the gamut there. Um, so as far as that goes, it, it's, it's a, it's a great living. Um, don't have to work terribly long hours and it, it's what I plan on to continue doing. Um, but at the same time, I'm sort of, uh, as you said in the beginning, peeking, you know, peeking my head out there and sort of, making it a little bit more public uh, mm-hmm. about what I do. Let's talk a little bit more about some of those fundamentals and the and the sure. uncoached way, which, by the way, I think this is the first podcast that we, we're using that term. So I'm going to say that you coined this and we launched, um, or you launched it, but you brought it up on this podcast. So the uncoached way, which, which, by the way, I like the uncoached way. I know you're not a big like <laughs> online course guy or this or that, but if you're, yeah. I, I like it the uncoached way as an overall whatever you're going to put under that umbrella. But go ahead, tell us a little bit more, just some of those fundamentals that make up the uncoached way. Yeah, sure. Um, so look, I mean, and as you said, I you know, cheesy titles aside, uh, you know, just the way I go about doing my own business, um, you know. It's something that's developed over the last, you know, decade plus and and just sort of how I run things today, which is a very, you know, regimented, specific way. But when it comes to the websites, it's extraordinarily straightforward. Um, You know, I'm not a technical guy. I don't know coding, you know, but if you were to ask me about WordPress, sure, I know where an ad goes. I know where to, you know, write content and put a picture, but I'm not so good with, you know, specific code. And I've always told people, like, to do what I do, it's like, let a lot of the technical stuff, you know, be the technical stuff. Focus on really, really good content uh, and focus on consistency of putting out that content. And over time, it's going to work out. At the very beginning, you may have to do a little bit of marketing and, and push a little bit, and that's what I did at the beginning just to sort of get on people's radar. 
but even today, you don't technically have to do that. If you're if you're putting out the right content, eventually the search engines will find you, um, and then it can really take off from there. Yes, the million different details, okay, and I can go into things for the next five months, okay, but mm -hmm. I've always told people that fundamentally – uh, putting out really, really good content and doing it consistently for a long time and not deviating from those main tenets uh, are a very, very big factor in, in where my business is today. Man, I love that. And, uh, I mean, that's how we've really built our company here is just really consistent content. And, you know, there's an I, I say there's an audience for everything. I mean, some people like my podcast, maybe some don't. But the ones that tune in, um, you know, those are the ones that obviously like it. Why? I'm not claiming I'm the best person on the podcast or a mic or anything like that. Why? I don't know why, but I don't care. It's like I want to bring these amazing stories to people. That's my passion. People can tell. So uh, can you comment a little bit? And I don't mean to get into the – into the nuances because I know that this this can be this is going to be different per website per niche per whatever and per your metric that you're measuring for. But can you tell us maybe in the in the form of like the spirit of what's good content? Like what do you think is like what are some of the questions or what is good content? What should people be asking themselves about when they're putting out content so that they can know if it's good content? Because it's it's intimidating because you hear a word good content and I'll give you an example. You say good content, I think okay, I, can, I might I might go on YouTube and I see an interview with Oprah or I might see Howard Stern or I might see this. If I'm judging my content versus theirs as good content, I, then you know it's hard to even start. But where do people? Yeah. What should people be thinking about when they think I need good content? That's a very very good question, and I think a question people probably don't ask enough um, because it it actually does run a very very wide gamut as far as what is good content. But the short answer, a good content is the type of content that produces the result it was intended to produce um, mm -hmm. in, in, a, in a very simple way to put it. So if your content was meant to make people laugh and it made a bunch of people laugh, it was good content. If your content answered a question that someone was looking for, which is probably more along the lines of what I do, mm -hmm. it's good content. So it doesn't it's not it doesn't mean it has to be something that's 50 pages long. It just mm -hmm. means it has to answer the question in the best way uh in the clearest way imaginable so that someone can understand it. Um that's kind of what I would consider good content, but it really depends on what your medium is and what you're mm -hmm. what you're trying to put out there. So like I said, if you want to be, you know, a, you know, a, a humor channel on YouTube, you better damn well put out some funny stuff. Yeah, you wanna, exactly. You know, if you want to if you want to do self help, hey, you got to put out some really good content, and that means it could be a video, it could be an article, but it's got to it's got to answer a fundamental question that someone is looking for. Uh, once that is answered, you have to, it. It also has to answer that question better than all the other competing content content out there. Uh, that's another part of the equation. So if you see, you know, someone who has a website on tennis rackets, it doesn't even matter. And they're pretty good at describing a certain tennis racket, but they're not really getting into the mind of someone who's looking for that racket. You might have an opportunity there to have a website about tennis rackets that's more detailed, that answers questions a little bit better than the other one. And in time, you could rank a little bit higher. Mm. So um, so next question, it's loaded, it's a terrible question, and you can't say both. And it's you know, both, okay. and it, but <laughs> that's a great setup, right? So, is this like a quality versus content question? There it is, quality, 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 quality versus quality quantity. Versus there you go. Yeah, you already knew it. it. It's yeah. a terrible question, but I have to get it out there because – It's not a terrible um, question. Again, I literally I, wrote about this. I literally wrote an article. Go on Uncoached right now because I know you have access to the Internet. Yeah. I look at my website, and I literally have an article <laughs> that went up, what was it, yesterday? It was yesterday, uh, putting to bed, like, the quality versus content issue. That's literally what I just wrote yesterday. I knew you were going to ask that. Um, so the answer is, um, quite simply, start with quality, okay? You, quali quality has to be the foundation. There's no question about that. But I'd be lying if I told you that quantity doesn't come into play eventually. It does. Um, there's no question. But if you had, if you put a gun to my head and said, what would you, you know, what would you start with? It would always be quality. 
Man, but, I love it because you're the opposite of me. I'm a quantity guy, 100%. Yeah, no, I, 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 I don't think <laughs> there's... No, and I, I'm glad you said that because I didn't want yeah. us to agree on this because I wanted the audience to understand. No, I'm serious because I didn't know. I, I, to be honest, I, I didn't read your article. I would just wanted your opinion on it. So yeah, I'm sure. the opposite of you, and I can tell my audience right now that possibly my first 1,000 episodes sucked on the podcast. My second 1,000 got better. Now I'm going on, on 3,000, so it just depends. on. But if you're, gonna, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, I'm a quantity guy too – you better damn well be uh, the. You better be putting out more quantity than anybody else. I put out more quantity of podcasts in that production than most people. Yeah. I would argue on the planet to build the skill to where the quality came in in over time. But if you're telling me I'm going to put out one, I'm a I'm a quantity guy, and you're not doing more than everybody else that you know. You know you're not. You're just putting out. You're just not. You're just trying to be like. You got to be all the way in that camp, or you better stick with quality because you can't hang yeah. with the with Look, the quantity like guys. Said, <laughs> there's, there's a there's a time and place for both, and there's mm-hmm. no question about it. But I'll give you a real simple example. Um, you know. It's a simple example, and it's also a huge example, but let's take Amazon, for example, right? Amazon, obviously, massive company, biggest company in the world, or, you know, one of them, whatever. And when Bezos started Amazon, what was Amazon? It was a book it was a book selling company. It was online books, right? And he has said this time and time again. He basically made it his mission to – you know, have customer service be the biggest priority. He said that time and time and time again. So his obsession was making sure that people were able to buy books in the best possible way, right? That was his that was his sort of mission. And you can bet he wasn't thinking, "Hey, I want to like deliver sponges to people's houses," right? Like it, it, mm-hmm. that wasn't. It was how can I be the best online bookseller in the entire world? And it was only then after he essentially built an incredibly scalable model that he extended that model in, out into other products. But you can also be sure that it's not like he went willy-nilly with every other product. He mm-hmm. researched those products just like he researched books. So for a time, it was all about quality, right? But it was also mm-hmm. quantity. You know, can, you know, how much work can we put in? How can we scale this thing? But scale it in a way that's right, that's not cutting corners, that's doing it you know, by a particular – method that works for him so at some point yeah you got to kick it into really high gear and do quantity there's no question um but all along it's doing it with within that specific you know procedural way that never cuts corners on the quality not um, not Matt. You, you cheated you cheated on the question sorry now i can't give you that uh, you, damn you're, it. you're going you're going you're going you're going with both i said you can't go with both of course what? both you know is what? the right but answer I, also like your, I like your example i like but, your but example both too, both i just no and for the record i said it was a terrible question but i wanted you on one side because i because i don't want people can, out there listening to this to be confused if it's quantity versus quality, you can go either or, but especially in the beginning, you're not going to be able to do both, period, unless you have a massive budget and unless you have a massive budget or you're funded by like a VC and you have all these things and you have the expertise behind it, but you don't have to do that in order to do this. Just to be clear, we did our first 1,500 episodes and then I was like, whoa, this thing's taken off. I got to like take a step back. We started over again. We didn't have to. We lost all those subscribers. I killed the entire brand. And it's still out there, but I don't do anything else on it anymore. And we started over again because then we were like, okay, now we know what we're doing, and now we can do quantity and quality. But that's after years and so much money yeah. invested in trial and error. But if you're, you got you got to, got to pick one in the beginning though, because <laughs> yeah, you can't do both. And there's definitely merit. There's definitely merit to what you're saying. Um, look, even when I started a website, a lot of it was just writing content. A ton of it. Granted, I wanted it to be the best it could be, but that content didn't resonate with everybody. Yeah. Eventually, I, you know, the site took on a theme. You and were doing just it one like, a day? One a day? How many a day? Oh, it was like 15. There you go. So, 
there you so, yeah. so you don't even have to answer so then now okay so if i was talking to young nat he would agree with me quantity if i'm talking to older more seasoned nat then he's going to say quality so just for everybody listening you see how we dig so you started out a quantity guy and then you you evolved and that's the way it should happen in my opinion like that's just i think that's the natural evolution of growing through any profession when you're a, if you're a financial advisor and you're making cold calls you need quantity in the beginning. After you have a book of business, you might be able to call your, like, really big clients and you have a relationship and get some referrals. So now you need quality. So it's like a pro- it's a progress. It's like a growth. But young Nat was a, qual- was a quantity guy just throwing it out there one a day. He said, no, 15. That's how you freaking do it. I got it. That's it, Nat. I, I love it. Um, so uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, we're out of time, I know, um, but this is good. Um, so that being said, if um, Nat, if somebody's listening to this, I definitely, I mean, you're, we just scratched the surface on this, and you do now put out, I'm not saying you didn't in the beginning, but just to be clear for everybody listening, he's definitely a quality guy. He's, he's been in this business as long as he has, and um, and in the websites he's grown and what he's done, I mean, your work speaks for itself. I just wanted to cap it off with saying that, like, you're definitely a quality camp now. And uh, so that being said, if somebody, if somebody's listening to this, Matt, and they do want to follow up with either your videos that you have out there that you're putting out really consistently or your, um, or your websites that where you're writing your own content and kind of teaching people about some of the things we talked about today. I mean, what's the best way for them to follow you? I would say to go on on coach.com. Uh, that's definitely the best place to go. And so that site is more kind of like the written portion of everything. And on that site, on the top right, you'll see, you know, little icons to all my social channels. So as far as where the video is, LinkedIn is probably the best platform for that. But, uh, yeah, it all starts on uncoached.com. That's where I would go. Fantastic. Well, Nat, it's been great having you on the show today. Uh, my pleasure. Um, and we have some great talk. I hope, I hope the audience that's listening, hope everybody enjoyed today's episode. Hope you got a lot out of it. If you did, don't forget, subscribe to the podcast. Uh, leave me a review on the Apple iTunes store. And if you're watching this on our YouTube channel, Mission Matters Marketing, definitely give us a subscribe there, but also leave us some comments on the video. Love to know what kind of uh, products and things that you're working on. And Nat, thanks again for coming on the show. It's been a pleasure. Thanks a lot. I appreciate it.